So in 2020, millions of Americans went from working in an office to working from home with the expectation that we would all return to a commute when the pandemic was behind us. Despite some of the headaches, it turns out more time at home, saving on childcare costs and gas and countless other benefits have made employees reluctant to return to pre-pandemic ways of working. Joining us this morning is executive coach Jan Lehman. Jan, good morning. Thanks for coming on to Boston 25 Morning News. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Jan, the work from home model, I have to ask you, is not going to work for every business or every employee, but it seems like a great non-monetary incentive. Why are we seeing so many companies insist that their employees be back in the office? Yeah, it starts It starts with a trust issue. So one of the things I think a number of managers realized going into the pandemic is they managed by walking around. And if somebody was in their seat, they assumed they were productive. And that's not going to work for us in a remote model. So the great news is we have fabulous technology now. We can really be tracking the tasks and deliverable and progress against deliverable that employees are working on. So you shouldn't have to see your employees. So that should actually alleviate that concern. The, the second part of it, though, is also a control issue. So many leaders have been grown, grown up in an environment where it was more of a command and control model, and they were used to doing what was right for the leader with a little less concern about the rest of the organization. But we've seen more of a shift toward the servant leader model, where there's more of a, a want and an understanding for what the employees want to need and how do we make this a win-win. And so those organizations certainly are going to be shifting easy, much more easily toward that model. With a, They're used to letting go of that control a little bit more. Yeah, the, the control of the servant is a, is a big shift. But when a company is able to offer a hybrid model of work, how are you finding that employees respond to that? Yeah, it's been interesting. I'm sure a lot of us have realized and learned a lot about ourselves. So we're seeing that our extroverts are super excited to get back in the office. They need the energy. They need to be around people. And then we have our introverts or maybe our really hardcore task-oriented people that are like, no, let me stay at home. I get so much more work done. And then you have the folks that are kind of stuck in the middle that want to be in the office, but they're frustrated. They have eight of their colleagues around the table, but they're still doing video meetings with a couple folks who are hybrid. So it's a mix. So, okay, if I, if I want uh, the option of working from, my, from home, what's the, like the best way to approach my boss? So for sure, if you're new to an organization, you needed to negotiate that during the recruiting process. Don't hit it like right when the first day on the job because it's about trust again. So it's about really proving to the organization that you can be trusted, you're self-managing, and they shouldn't have any concerns. And then it's about starting slow. So don't come in and say, I want to start working 100% remotely. Maybe you suggest I'd like to do a trial period for a month. Let's see how it goes. The boss will feel much less threatened in that environment. You might suggest I'll just take Fridays that I work from home because that has less of an impact to the rest of the organization since typically there's less meetings on Friday. So start it actually slow. Also super important to think about it from your boss's perspective. So what might be the concerns that they have about you working in your home environment? So maybe you just had a new baby or you have young children at home and so you want to talk about arrangements you've made with your spouse or partner for childcare. You want to talk about how you've set up your home office in a secluded space so there'll be less interruptions and distractions, all of those sort of things to alleviate what they have <clears throat> where they're concerned. The other and the equally important is it's really important to be proactive about your communication. So we've been joking that the old adage, no news is good news, is really not the case in the hybrid world. It's more no news is perceived bad news. So have your video camera on at all times, no matter where you are, who you're meeting with. Uh, we all know people tend to are, uh, multitask when they don't have their videos on. So be proactive in that communication. Let them know that you're as attentive and available. Also, um, really also think about <clears throat> If you don't work in an organization where they have a way of tracking tasks and deliverables, then come up with your own plan. So maybe on Monday morning, you say, these are the three things I'm going to work on for the week. And then Friday afternoon, you give a status update and indicate exactly what you accomplished. And that, that will alleviate a lot of fears. Great tips. Jan Lehman is the founder of CTC Productivity. Jan, thank you so much. Thank you.